here in the season. Do we have Jay with us? We do have Jay. He also said give give Major League Baseball players those nice bats. Look at Jay. The metal joints, we're ready to go. Jay. What's up, Jay? All I want to know. Listen, I wish they were using those metal bats. I really, <laughs> I really, I was at Philly's camp one year, and Jim Tomey thought he would grab a metal bat just to see what he could do with it. And their training facility was on uh, US 19 in Clearwater, and it's about a six or seven, eight lane highway on the backside of the facility. And he hit a ball out of the ballpark and over all lanes of traffic on US 19. And I realized, so that's why they don't use metal bats in, in Major League Baseball. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, what's up, man? I ain't my phone ain't ring. What's going on? You know, I you're on their radar. I I, I don't want to make you think that they, they know who you are. They know who you are. They know where you are. Yeah. I would I would keep your ringer on because you never know. <laughs> Jay, did you tell them that you would, we would give them a show? So nah. this is what I told them. Okay. Your hips are a little tight. Will you stop? But you run well. Stop that. You're, you're gonna stop. Stop putting that false narrative out there. Jay, At least he didn't say your yeah. glutes is, is hey, tight. Hey Jay, did you? I don't know if you heard. Did you hear the interview with Mike Barron at all? Did you hear what he had to say? Any of it? Just the tail end of it. But I heard. What, I heard you recap him and say that uh, you know he doesn't think the Guardians need to go out and, and get a starting pitcher. And I've got to tell you, Bull. I I, I think that. I, I tend to agree with that. Williams is a name I'm hearing a lot about. He was going also bananas very, about him. No, listen, and with very good reason. There yeah. is a lot of excitement in this organization. We, we always have that next guy in the pipeline. Here's the thing. Even with the back end of the rotation struggling last year, everybody's been quick to point out that all of those guys were dealing with some form of injury or another. And they look healthy. I just watched Plezak throw a bullpen. And I know it's just a bullpen, but I also watched him pitch a couple of innings. He pitched four innings against Mexico on Wednesday. And, you know, they've got that WBC roster has a lot of really nice major league talent on it. He threw four innings, one hit ball. More importantly, I thought he had great command of all of his stuff. He looks like Plezak from a couple of years ago. So I, I don't know that anybody in the organization is quick to think about going out to get that starting pitching help because they love what they have in the pipeline and Williams is a name I hear a lot about and also Bybee. So if they can get, and they're going to get chances, you know, I just talked yeah. to Chris Antonetti, Chris Antonetti and he said, look, you know, during the course of the season, you know how it goes. Guys get hurt. Opportunity comes available and it's what guys do with that opportunity. Last year, we saw everybody that had that opportunity really capitalized on it. So I look, if we need one at the dread at the, at the trade deadline, They've got enough pieces here that they can work something and try to go out and get another arm. But right now, I think I think they're in pretty good shape, Bull. Yeah, he he flipped. He says, I don't think they need a pitcher. He says, I still think they need one more bat. Yeah. He doesn't have a lot of faith in Oscar Gonzalez. Mm. He he said that he he mentioned my guy Brian Reynolds. He, he yeah, I know you love him. He said, I think they should go. He says at the deadline, I think he, they should go out and get Brian Reynolds. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But. Yeah, I will say this, and I don't want to make too much of it, but uh, I just watched Oscar Gonzalez finish batting practice. So we're here at the ballpark in Goodyear, and we're at the. We're, they're just taking BP right now. They're all going to get on a bus and head to Phoenix. They have uh, the Brewers in a one o'clock start over there. Uh, it'd be three o'clock for you guys. But I just watched Gonzo hit, hit, take BP, and um, he look I don't know how, but to me, he looks a little bigger. It looks like his upper body has perhaps developed a little bit from season to season. And one of the things that when he would step out of the cage that he was working on was his launch angle. He was really working on his lead hand, making sure that he's keeping his angle in line. And for what it's worth, I know it's batting practice. You don't want to make too much of it, but he was lofting balls out of here like it was nothing. I mean, with very yeah. little effort. And that's the one thing that I think everybody thought that they were going to see more of last year from Gonzalez was a little more power. I think he looks like he's built to hit a little bit more for power this year. And all the guys that I've talked to say that he's done his work, he's ready to go. And we've talked a lot on this show about the fear of that second year slump, but I don't, I don't know that they're nearly as worried about a bull as you and I are, because all I right. think Good. all off season, they were working on how to avoid that. Mm. Well, you know, we heard about Gonzalez, but what about this new power? Uh, you know, power from um, Straw. What about that? No, 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 no power. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, um, he he is uh, 
he is one of the elixirs in the clubhouse, guys. Everybody loves Miles Straw. He's oh, funny. He's he's a stone breaker. He's so he's kind of that guy. You remember the the, the little tip that they had with the fans at Yankee Stadium last year. He's yeah, a yeah. don't back down guy. <laughs> And, you know, I know, Bull, you were really hard on him last year. I love him for his defense and for his speed. Um, the good thing about the season ending is that you get to hit the reset button. I'm not saying he's going to hit 280, but he's not going to hit 200 either. So I think somewhere in between, they think they'd be happy with 240, 250, the same defense in the, in, in the outfield and run the bases like he has. And I think everything's going to be okay. Out th their outfield looks great. Well, Jay, listen, he, he won a gold glove. If you can get him to 265, come on now. Oh. 265 and some stolen bases with the D, I'll take that for balls. Especially because well, he's the hell, worst guy ball. in the lineup now, not the football. Woo! You know, last year, he yeah. was like the seventh guy in the lineup. Now he's the, he's the last guy. So I can live with a guy with no power and a mediocre batting average if I'm getting that great speed and great defense. But, Jay, you spoke with Terry Francona yesterday. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. I know you got some clips to play. I did, and before we hear the first clip, I want to set it up this way. For anybody that's followed Terry through his career, you know the last three years, 20, 21, and 22, have been a real grind for him. He's had one sort of ailment after another. We know about the feet. We know about the stomach issues he had. He had the hip. He went in, and as soon as the offseason was over, a couple of weeks later, he had a procedure done in Cleveland. He, he told me that he feels as good as he's felt in years and I know people don't think well how how much of a grind can it be to manage a big league team Tito's in the office first thing in the morning and you know it he's there he's there all day and it is a grind I know it's it, it, people may not think that but it physically can be a grind and it, it can be very demanding particularly with the travel but one of the things we started our conversation about and that'll be the first clip that we get to Mike is his health how he feels and how he feels he's positioned to get through the full 162 this year without having to miss any games for any illnesses or any surgeries or anything like that. Mike, you can, Steve, you can roll it. Really hope. You look well. You look. How about I, I, I told B, I look less worse than usual. How's that? <laughs> um, I don't want to say that because that's to no, imply that you looked horrible before. I, I but did. As, I did. As you juxtapose, it's just you're wearing health very well. I, 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 I feel healthier. I needed to be. It was getting in the way. I mean, I, some of it I couldn't help. Right. You know, it's hard. You know, you're on crutches or you know you can't do anything. You know, I was gaining weight. It, I, I everything was hard. You know, sure. you know I'd go down to the field for batting practice and I'd have to give myself a pep talk. You know, that's that's hard way to do stuff. So I do feel a lot better this spring. Because of that, do you do you feel energized in the role? Not to say that you. You know, maybe you didn't feel up to it before, but no, no I, I do, I, and I didn't. I was leaning on the coaches way too much, mm -hmm. and they're really good at what they do, but it's not fair. I need to pull my end of it, and I feel like I'm able to now, which I'm appreciative of, because this this job, even on good days, can get kind of hard. But you want to be able to enjoy some of the, you know, like I said, when we lose, I get mad, but that doesn't mean you don't enjoy the day, and you know. It, just hard when you can't move around very well. Yeah. How long did it sort of take to decompress and process the season after the Yankees series? And what did you, like, as you looked back and had some time to think about it, what were your thoughts? Yeah, um, I stayed in Cleveland for about three weeks because I had to have a procedure done. And so that, that helped. Um, I was really proud of what we did. You know, obviously, anytime you're not the last team standing, there's going to be disappointment, but I think if you look at it logically, and it's really hard to look at it logically when you're playing, mm -hmm. but when you're done and you look at it logically, we did okay. As long as it was a step in the right direction and not a feel-good story one year, and, you know, and that's what I told our guys about 10 minutes after the game in New York, is that this has to be a jumping-off point not just a feel-good story and move on. Yeah. That's the thing with baseball, whether it's at bat to at bat, game to game, season to season. Now, as you assess what you did last year and you start to look at what's in front of you, last year becomes a memory real quick. It has to, whether you did good or bad. 
you try to learn from whatever you did last year. We try to learn what we did yesterday. That's one of our obligations. But you move on. Even if you have a lot of the same guys, which we do, it'll be a different team. It, you watch, it'll be a different bullpen. Um, and we're going to form a new identity. We don't know what that is yet. That's what we're here working on. But we'll forge one, and hopefully it's one that has a lot of the same characteristics of last year because I like that way, the way we play the game. Guys, he looks good, doesn't he? I mean, he, he looks does. refreshed. He absolutely he does. Yeah, he looks like um, he's – Go, go ahead, Bull. No, I was just going to say, yeah, it's good because, as you mentioned, he's just been through so much physically, and we know how important it is to the team. It's a man – he's so self-deprecating for such an accomplished guy. Like, <laughs> oh, I put too much on the coaches. I do this. I do that. It's amazing. You don't usually find people that successful that are that self-deprecating. You know, you're you're absolutely right. Um, but that's part of the charm of Tito. Uh, you know, we, he was manager of the year last year. Third time he's won the AL manager of the year. You look where he ranks right now in baseball amongst active managers. And granted, he's been doing it 22 years. He should be up there. But he's second only behind Dusty Baker. So it really sort of lets you know you know, how accomplished he is. And you're right, he's he's the first one that will take a shot at himself, um, which is, is certainly an endearing uh, characteristic. The outfielders just finished BP, now the infielders are in. And guys, one thing I want to really try to stress, Josh Bell is a large human being. I mean, uh-huh. he, he comes across he comes across large on TV. Uh, I was talking about it with, uh, with Chris Antonetti earlier. He said when he's walking down the hallway, you can't see on either side of him. He's just a broad, tall, big, massive human being Hmm. who told me yesterday one of the things that he's going to really focus on this year. Bull, I actually mentioned your comment to Josh about how, yeah, he's had had 37 home runs in a season, but I I told him one of my coworkers believes you have another level that you can hit, and he said he absolutely believes he does. He's working on a, a more level plane to his swing, not trying to launch, not trying to lift fly balls. He says, if I'm at my best when I'm hitting the ball hard and straight, Home runs will happen. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if he has a very big year. And everybody is thrilled to have him here because obviously Hosey's going to see better pitches. And it's just going to make – it's going to extend the lineup. It's going to make everybody in the lineup that much better. Jay, before we get to the second clip, who you spoke to him. Who else did you speak to besides Tito and Bell? Uh, we talked to about 15 guys. Oh, so wow. we talked – yeah, we talked to everybody, um, all, all of the main players we've spoken to. We're going to get Shane Bieber when we're done here. We're going back to get Shane Bieber. We're also going to get Mike Zanino. We talked with – I, I think the most impressive of all the guys, without question, is Tristan McKenzie. Mm-hmm. Um, guys, his upside – and they talked a little bit about him developing that third pitch to go along with that electric fastball and that crazy movement to his curveball. He doesn't seem too concerned about adding – that third pitch. He has the slider. He likes the slider. It's not necessarily one of his plus pitches, but he can throw that pitch. Um, Doesn't seem too concerned about adding a change, although Carl Willis told me yesterday that, you know, that is something that long term they're definitely going to work on because he can go from the front of the rotation kind of guy to a Cy Young kind of guy with that third pitch. So I do think that down the road, he's definitely going to want to develop that. Um, Miles Straw, we spoke with Stephen Kwan, who, by the way, is in a very good place mentally. In fact, that'll get me to my second clip. Yeah. We've talked about it at length on the show. How do these guys, these kids that had crazy success last year, look what Gonzo did in the playoffs, particularly the big hits he had in that Rays series, the walk-off home run to win the series. And Stephen Kwan started red hot, hit a real rough patch in May and June, and a lot of folks thought he was going to have to go down to the minors to try to figure it out. But Tito told me, and you'll hear it in this clip, He's so mentally strong, he was able to make the adjustments to the adjustments, not only stay up, but continue to have a fantastic season, get a lot of votes in the Rookie of the Year award, and really become a fixture now for the Guardians in the outfield. So here's Tito now on all the things that were done in the offseason to make sure these second-year guys don't hit a rough patch. The baseball rule book says if you have 17 guys making their big league debuts, it's a 100-loss season. At least in, that time, in I've my been, experience. I've been in clubhouses where the season's over and somebody says, hey, what would you think of the year? Uh, we were too young. We were just too young. Sure. Can't say that. They, I mean, you, you were young, but, but not too but, young. But they, 
they competed, they never backed down from a challenge, all things we talk about, but that's way easier said than done when you're talking about kids that are trying to, shoot, they're trying to find their footing, you know, in our league, but they always paid attention to the scoreboard and, you know, that's, sometimes that's, like I said, it's easier said than done when you're thinking in the back of your head, oh, I got to get a hit or I'm going to go to triple A. You know, when Hosey doesn't get hits, he's mad maybe, but he knows he's coming back and, you know, and these other guys like Jimenez was growing into where he knew he didn't have to go two for four or he's going to sit the next night. So the, they were, you could see their confidence growing. I mean, I remember Quan in May, he was worried he was going to get sent down. We never thought about it. I wish I'd have known. I'd have said something to him. He didn't play like, I mean, he did. He had the slump. But what was fun to watch about him last year is it almost like he went through a sophomore slump in the middle of the season. So you are you less worried about him having that sophomore slump because he made the adjustments that the league had made to him? I mean, all players go through tough periods, and you never know when it's going to happen. I mean, I worry about all of them in April in Cleveland because it's cold. It can be pretty cruel. So you worry about guys, especially young guys. But when they have a track record, they have something to fall back on, which, which certainly helps. Um, I, I think guys like Quan, I think he's strong enough mentally that if he does go through a tough time, he'll figure it out. Yeah. And he's good enough physically, he'll, he'll figure it out. That's really the, the element. It's, it's up here. Oh, it, I don't think people realize to be an everyday major league player, you have to be so tough mentally because you get beat on so much. And there's so much frustration. And to be really good, it, I have a lot of respect for guys that can do that. The, the two glaring pieces that needed to be addressed were, and it's almost like Chris magically goes out and find, I mean, it was obvious where the weaknesses were, but talk about how you've got your core back and then they're very young. And then you got considerably better at first base and the catch position. And it looks like the, the strings that needed to be pulled were pulled. Well, that's the hope. And, and we never claim to be the 27 Yankees, mm -hmm. but we do have guys in place that we want to see how good this group can get. Um, you know, getting Josh Bell is a switch hitter that can hit behind Hosey, especially against left-handers. We, we could get, we, we had some, we had some difficulties last year. You were thin. Yeah. yeah. And that's not a knock on anybody. It's just, we were a little thin. And when Hedgie was a free agent, we, we wanted to bring in somebody that cared first about the pitching and defense. And then hopefully, you know, when he, when Zeno's healthy, He's hit 30 home runs, so that's really welcome also. I know, uh, Bull, you're going to miss Hedgie for sure. Oh. <laughs> but I think we're going to love Zanino too. I really do. I think we're going to. Yeah. I know. You're gonna, who are you going to pick on? Come on, man. He's still got I don't want to pick on anybody. I don't want there to be anybody that's, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That stink, but if they stink, you're going to make sure yeah. they... So yeah. let's wrap it up with our talk from Tito yesterday about the expectations for the 2023 season. Obviously, after the success from last year, <laughs> you got to continue taking step forward. As we roll the clip, I'll lead to it this way. I thought the most prophetic thing that he said last year, five minutes after the Yankees series ended, he went into the clubhouse and he said, guys, this is not the end. This cannot be the end. This has to be the beginning. Roll it, Steve. What is your overall expectations? I know that you probably don't talk about them out loud, but in your mind, you have an idea of what this team either can do or what you expect them to do. But you know what? The stuff that we talk about every day, the reason we talk about it is because we believe in it. Sure. It's not just coach talk or manager talk because you don't know where we're going to get challenged. You don't know if guys are going to get hurt. You know, if you lose three pitchers, and if you start to make proclamations now, and then all of a sudden you lose your whole pitching staff, that's probably not going to come true. Okay, well, your season doesn't end. You just keep competing. So that's why we keep them in small segments. Like, hey, let's show up today. Let's see how good we can do. And then take enough time to learn from what we did and then move along. Is that the key? Yes. Yeah. I, that, to me, it is. Because you can get bogged down in, in like, okay, I'm, I'm 0 for 20. We've all seen it. I've, I've lived it. 
You don't go up to the plate feeling real good about yourself. Right. But, but when you're hitting good, you walk up there, you got a little <laughs> swagger. The idea is to put the bat in the rear view mirror and talk yourself into having some swagger anyway, which is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, what should fans expect to see when they show up at Progressive Field this year? I think the idea is we tried last year to really set a tone for how we were going to play. And I was really proud of our guys for that. Now the idea is they have a year under their belt. So the game should start to slow down for them a little bit, but it'll never slow down the way we play. Mm -hmm. It just makes it easier to hopefully make better decisions. So that's the idea is to kind of take it to another level. Yeah, that's Great the whole stuff. idea. Um, one of the other things that I want to share with you guys, uh, you remember we had Will Brennan on the show a couple of months ago, and um, we also interviewed him yesterday or the day before, I can't remember. Uh, he just wanted me to pass on to you guys that he had a great time on our show. Nice. He loved everybody, and he wants to be a regular guy for us. So he's probably going to be a guy that we bring on throughout awesome. the course of the season. Good. He's got more time probably. You know, he's clearly not going to be a starter, but he's probably going to – I hope he makes the roster – and, uh, you know, he's he's hoping that he can be a piece to what they're doing here. But he really enjoyed his time on, on the show and uh, says he definitely wants to come back. He wants to do it on a regular basis. So that's good news for us. That, that is great, Jay. That's, that's awesome my MVP stuff. pick for this year. Hey, that's what's up, man. Jay, Jay, I'll be, be nah, out nah, to nah, scout. Nah, nah, nah. Get to the good stuff. Jay, what's the weather like over there? Oh. Uh, it's cloudy today, so that's no, uh, you know, no, it's a no, little no. bit of a bummer, but it's 80 degrees, so I'm not going to complain. I mean, it's not overly cloudy, but <laughs> the, the last two days, there wasn't a cloud to be seen. Today, there's there's clouds in the sky, but, you know, the sun the sun pops out, and you get uh, periods of great sunshine. And I heard that you guys are getting, like, two snow. or three inches of snow back there. Freezing rain, snow. It's yeah, awful. you give me the temperature. What's the temperature? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be 80 today. Uh, I might miss my flight tomorrow. Okay, uh, I'm just saying. I, have, stay I, I, I might warm. miss my flight. Uh, hey, Jay, have a good trip back. We'll we'll see you on Monday. Keep getting. Thanks, keep guys. Working, see you Monday. Roger. Keep working the room for me, Jay. <laughs> nah, I, I'm doing my own work, bro. Uh, <laughs> all right, it's Jay down in Arizona. He'll be hey, back man, in studio hey, on Monday. Hey, t listen, don't try it, Jay. Tracy's not having that. You you're going to be yeah. right back up here with us. Yeah, Stop. But right now we got to be right with Cole and Gracie. <laughs>